I'm coming at you today with another video. It is a super highly requested video. Actually, I get a lot of emails. I get a lot of comments on Instagram of uh, you guys asking me what a great starter bag is uh, when you're starting off getting into the designer handbag world. Um, so, um, and most people give me a budget and a cutoff of what they're looking into spending. I would say probably that cutoff is usually a thousand dollars. So I thought I would do my top 10 handbags under a thousand dollars, my personal favorites and my thought presses on them. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do five in this video and I'm going to put the other five on my blog so I'll link that below so you guys go check it out. They are bags that I don't actually have in my collection but I do really like them so the bags that I will show you here are bags that I do personally own and I can give you kind of a mini review while I'm in the game of talking about it. If you haven't already subscribed I'd really love it and appreciate it if you did um, but with that being said let's jump right into this video and find out what favorite bags I have under a thousand dollars. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to do this from um, least expensive to most expensive and starting off with that is a $355 price point. Uh, this bag right here is by The Stowe. They are, they're probably considered more high street than designer, but as somebody who loves designer handbags, this bag in my opinion should cost a lot more than it does. $355 I feel like is almost a steal. I actually, um, bought this bag from my friend Primary, uh, my friend Cleo who owns Primary and I have a promo code for her shop so I will put uh, the promo code below. It will actually give you 15% off so this bag will be $355 minus 15% off. This bag to me is an ultimate basic, I have had this bag for three years and I still reach for it. It has these adjustable um, it has an adjustable shoulder strap here. It can really go from like super shoulder bag to crossbody. And when I say crossbody, because I know a lot of you don't trust my judgment in crossbody because I'm so short, uh, but this can crossbody like on a really tall girl. I have a friend of mine who has it and she's like a giant compared to me and it crossbodies really nicely on her. The leather on this is kind of a scuba leather. It wears really, really well. It is unlined on the inside, which I actually happen to love. It's just one big bucket. Uh, as I've said, I have owned this bag for over two years and look how amazing it still looks. The leather, I know a lot of people are nervous about smooth leather and it marking. This does not mark. Like when I tell you, I have brought this with me on a plane and shoved it under a seat and kicked it because the lady who was walking by was like, your handbag is sticking out too much and I would just kick it type of thing. So this bag with time has absolutely, absolutely kept its shape. I've actually dropped an entire bottle of water in here and it didn't morph the bottom or anything. It just, it's still so beautiful. You have the ropes that go through here. You can squeeze it shut here. Hold on. You can have it really shut tight on top um, in case for security reasons, nobody would really be able to reach into here. Like I have tiny little hands and I can barely fit my hand in there. Um, but I tend to like it really, really pulled out and kind of stretched out like this. This is kind of like this. This is the way that I like to carry mine. The hardware on this is a nice brass color, um, but it is really black on black with the exception. See all the hardware on the side is black with the exception of the two little brass screws here and the brass strap. So this bag at $355 is in my opinion a, an amazing, amazing starter bag. I've owned bucket bags from so many different brands and I have to say this is by far my favorite. Like I've had Le Petit Noé by Louis Vuitton and like it doesn't, there's no comparison to this bucket bag. I've had the Mansur, I've had friends that have the Mansur and this is just the winner in any bucket bag I've ever owned. It's just perfect and I highly, highly, highly recommend it. And I mean at $355, you can't really go wrong. Next bag I'm gonna mention is by a brand called Cara. They are really, really, really picking up. They are in between high street and designer. They're definitely at the same level of Mansur. I discovered this brand on Instagram. I saw a bunch of bloggers carrying it and I was like, wow, these are great backpacks. Well, let me show you what it is. It is my Cara backpack. Um, this bag is $450. This is the small size. I have it in the patent perforated at the bottom. This was an exclusive for Essence, the online store Essence.com. And my mom and dad got this for me for Christmas 
this year or the year before. Well, I kind of told them this is what I wanted for Christmas and they went out and picked the colorway that they liked. And I'm really happy they went this way because it is super, it, it was an exclusive run just for Essence. So I don't think this is something anybody will be able to find again unless it's potentially on eBay. Uh, but yeah, the Kara backpacks are absolutely stunning. The inside is, this is what they're known for, is this top part, how it kind of just closes like a lunchbox. And it's just one big hole on the inside and you just have a back pocket. It surprisingly fits a lot. It fits my Louis Vuitton MM Agenda. It fits my makeup. It fits everything that I could possibly ever need with me and it is really comfortable. I tend to hold it on here and just kind of hand hold it because I am not much of a backpack girl. Uh, so I definitely just use the backpack like this or I would just double strap it on one side kind of like this. I'm not a double strap backpack kind of girl. I'm definitely more one of these girls here like this look right here is definitely my jam what I do really like about this handbag is the back pocket right here so the whole back of the backpack is another pocket which is where I would put my cell phones anything that I want easy access to is here it is not buttoned uh, it does have a little button but it's not actually a button it's a magnetic closure and it's just very easy to go in and out of when you have your stuff in there and it's kind of invisible so no one really notices there's a pocket over there except I mean the straps are adjustable with kind of these toggle closures uh, you have three different lengths of shoulder straps. I have it dead smack in the middle. This is actually how the bag came and I never ended up changing it. The back is just the perforated on mine, but this bag does come in just the full solid leather like here and it also comes in a larger size, which I really like. I think my next Kara bag might be the larger size and potentially like an elephant gray. I think that would be really nice with the grained pebbled leather. The hardware on here is silver, uh, but again, like the stow bag, uh, the rest of like the buttons and everything are black on black hardware, which I really, really like. It just says Kara on here on the pull tab, which is definitely recognizable. It is such a great shape. It's so beautiful. I'm looking at it in the viewfinder. I'm just, I really hyped about this brand and I think it's a great discovery brand and at $450, it's a great price point for a backpack. All the prices that I'm mentioning in here are also US dollars, guys. I just want to give you a heads up because this I actually bought from a Canadian retailer and it came up to close to 700 with taxes and everything. So I just wanted to give you guys a heads up. Prices I'm mentioning in here are in US dollars. So this was 450 US. It was actually a handbag that I used to have and I don't own anymore, but I do think it is a really good opening price point handbag for um, someone getting into the designer world. It's the Stella McCartney Falabella bucket bag. I love this bag. I think it's so beautiful. It's like a mini, mini bucket bag with the beautiful Falabella chain. It's not a bag that I have anymore, but I did really like the bag when I got it. The only reason I ended up selling it was because I loved my Stow bucket bag so much that I didn't feel the need for a second bucket bag. If you are in the market for a bucket bag and you don't want to go for something that's as large as the Stow, the Stella McCartney one is absolutely stunning. It's about this big. Mine was in gray. It was absolutely absolutely stunning with silver hardware and it's just one of those bags that it packs flat it's super practical for travel the only thing that I'm not loving about Stella bags is they are not leather I love a good leather handbag but for those of you who are um, against leather Stella is a great option and this mini bucket is $6.95 retail so it's such a great price point it's a nice way to get a Stella piece for an under $1,000 price point. And also, I love the idea of the Falabella, but I don't like how many people have it. So I feel the bucket is such a great way of doing it versus the way everybody else has it. So I just think it's really fun. It's a nice way to just get into the designer market without just kind of like jumping in and spending three grand. The next bag I had to mention was this one right here. This is the Gucci Disco Bag. This is what I love about Gucci is their affordability on a great leather handbag. This one retails for $890 US and it comes in a multitude of colors and leather finishes. This one being the patent leather uh, fuchsia. It comes, I would love to get this bag in more of a neutral color it comes in suede also like maybe like an army green suede would be so nice uh, this is a body that they're now known for it has that camera that camera bag shape but this bag fits a ton of stuff let me just open it up for you guys 
So it is just their linen lining on the inside. It is super roomy. It fits my Louis Vuitton Agenda MM, but it probably wouldn't fit much more in there aside from that and maybe a card case and maybe my EpiPen, but it does fit a ton for such a small looking handbag. I feel like this is one of those bags that you would kind of want to know like a bunch of different colors just because it is so versatile and so practical. And I love that mine is in the patent leather because it's one of those just use a baby wipe and it's cleaned up. You use this bag for going out a lot, which usually when you're putting it on a table where there's drinks and gets sticky and everything. So it's nice to have um, a handbag that you can just kind of like wipe and go. And this bag I've had, Mo got this for my birthday. No, at Christmas? I think he got it for Christmas for me like three years ago. And like I said, I use this bag mainly for going out and it still looks mint. Like I use this bag. This bag has seen some interesting nights with me and you would never know based on looking at it. It still looks like a, it's mint condition. So this is just what it looks like. So this bag for me is a great starter piece, especially Gucci being so hot right now. Mo got this one for me before Gucci kind of repicked back up and I'm really happy he did because I think he actually paid less than what it is selling for right now in store. Next bag that I'm gonna mention is a bag that I have had on repeat since my birthday this year. Again, it was a birthday present from my parents. They like to buy, actually they, they don't like to buy me bags, but the only thing I like to get is gifts are bags. So I get bags from my parents and from Mo pretty much every birthday and Christmas. And well, this bag in question was one that I had been dying for since it came out, and it is the YSL Blogger Bag. This one retails for $995, and it is just so beautiful. It is definitely tiny, but I feel like the giant, beautiful tassel just kind of makes up for it. The leather is so smushy, so beautiful. I have been wearing this bag twice, if not three times a week, pretty much all summer, which is unheard of for me because I am on heavy rotation with handbags. Um, so I feel like that says a lot of my thought process on this bag. It comes in grain leather, it comes in smooth leather, it comes in gold hardware, silver hardware. I, t I went with the light pink and silver hardware. I have not had any color transfer on it. A lot of people I know were asking me about this when I showed it in my birthday haul. I have not had any issues. Also, I was getting a lot of questions about smooth leather. Does it scratch easily? The answer again is no. I mean, you can see this bag has zero signs of wear. It still looks mint condition. The I mean, it's it's absolutely stunning and beautiful. Um, this is one of those pieces that I did see it in slate with gold hardware, and it's so stunning that I kind of like, when you love something, repeat, you know what I'm saying? It's one of those bags. It comes with a tiny little strap. It's not adjustable. It is on the long side for those of you who are taller than me and wondering if it can be crossbodied. It definitely can. To be quite honest, it's probably too long for me, which is why a lot of times when I carry it, I knot the top like this and I just shoulder bag it and I just knot it like this. And when I go to, like I feel like it has like a very early 90s vibes, like my mom used to do that with bags back in the day. And you just kind of have that like leather kind of like loop popping up, which I really like, early 90s, such a cute look. And when I just, and when I get home, I just make sure to undo the knot so it doesn't permanently bend the leather. Uh, but yeah, no, it is a very long strap for those of you who are asking. And I think it's just a great way to have some Saint Laurent in your wardrobe at an affordable price point being under $1,000. Yes, I agree, it is small, but it is Saint Laurent and you do get the beautiful logo and I really, I don't know, I really, really, really enjoy it. And I know that a lot of my friends have picked it up because they saw it on me and they really liked it. And, um, Everyone has come back to me and been like, I'm so happy. I'm so happy I bought this bag. It was such a good purchase. So yay, I really like this one. So guys, this is my top five. Make sure to check out my blog. I will link it below for the other five bags that I love that are under $1,000. Make sure to leave me a comment on my blog if you came from this video and let me know how your feelings are on the top 10 that I suggested and if you think I missed out on something, make sure to leave it in the comment section either below here or in my blog. I really love the feedback. So with that being said, I don't think I have anything else to say besides I love you guys and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.
I would appreciate it if you did. Um, but with that being said, let's jump right into this video and find out what favorite bags I have under a thousand dollars. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to do this from um, least expensive to most expensive, and starting off with that is a three hundred and fifty-five dollar price point. Uh, this bag right here is by the Stowe. They are. They're probably considered more high street than designer, but as somebody who loves designer handbags, this bag, in my opinion, should cost a lot more than it does. $355, I feel like, is almost a steal. I actually um, bought this bag from my friend Primary, uh, my friend Cleo, who owns Primary, and I have a promo code for her shop, so I will put uh, the promo code below. It will actually give you 15% off, so this bag will be $355 minus 15% off. This bag bag to me is an ultimate basic. I have had this bag. So this bag with time has absolutely, absolutely kept its shape. I've actually dropped an entire bottle of water in here and it didn't morph the bottom or anything. It just, it's still so beautiful. You have the ropes that go through here. You can squeeze it shut. Here, hold on. You can have it really shut tight on top um, in case for security reasons, nobody would really be able to reach into here. Like I have tiny little hands and I can barely fit my hand in there um, but I tend to like it really really pulled out and kind of stretched out like this this is kind of like this this is the way that I like to carry mine the hardware on this is a nice brass color um, but it is really black on black with the exception see all the hardware on the side is black with the exception of the two a little brass screws here and the brass Strap. So this bag at $355 is, in my opinion, a, an amazing, amazing start over three years and I still reach for it. It has these adjustable, um, it has an adjustable shoulder strap here. It can really go from like super shoulder bag to crossbody. And when I say crossbody, because I know a lot of you don't trust my judgment in crossbody because I'm so short, uh, but this can crossbody like on a really tall girl. I have a friend of mine who has it and she's like a giant compared to me and it crossbodies really nicely on her. The leather on this is kind of a scuba leather. It wears really, really well. It is unlined on the inside, which I actually happen to love. It's just one big bucket. Uh, as I've said, I have owned this bag for over two years and look how amazing it still looks. The leather, I know a lot of people are nervous about smooth leather and it marking. This does not mark. Like when I tell you, I have brought this with me on a plane and shoved it under a seat and kicked it because the lady who was walking by was like, your handbag is sticking out too much and I would just kick it type of thing. Bag. I've owned bucket bags from so many different brands and I have to say this is by far my favorite. Like I've had Le Petit Noé by Louis Vuitton and like it doesn't, there's no comparison to this bucket bag. I've had the Mansur, I've had friends that have the Mansur and this is just the winner in any bucket bag I've ever owned. It's just perfect and I highly, highly, highly recommend it. And I mean, at $355, you can't really go wrong. Next bag I'm gonna mention is by a brand called Cara. They are really, really, really picking up. They are in between high street and designer. They're definitely at the same level of Mansur. I discovered this brand on Instagram. I saw a bunch of bloggers carrying it and I was like, wow, these are great backpacks. Well, let me show you what it is. It is my Cara backpack. Um, this bag is $450. This is the small size. I have it in the patent perforated at the bottom. This was an ex- Hey guys, I'm coming at you today with another video. It is a super highly requested video. Actually, I get a lot of emails. I get a lot of comments on Instagram of uh, you guys asking me what a great starter bag is uh, when you're starting off getting into the designer handbag world. Um, so, um, and most people give me a budget and a cutoff of what they're looking into spending. I would say probably that cutoff is usually a thousand dollars. So I thought I would do my top 10 handbags under a thousand dollars, my personal favorites and my thought process on them. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do five in this video and I'm gonna put the other five on my blog. So I'll link that below so you guys go check it out. They are bags that I don't actually have in my collection, but I do really like them. So the bags that I will show you here are bags that I do personally own and I can give you kind of a mini review while I'm in the game of talking about it. If you haven't already subscribed, I'd really love